Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Alive, my search for the best ways to live. My name is Jiga Jr. And today, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little itchy. I don't know what's going on. Today, our, our guest is uh, the man responsible for bringing bands like Urban Dub and uh, Dice and K9 into the national consciousness. He's also the uh, artist and repertoire man of Warner Music Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up. I, I, you know, a football stadium size applause for Alexander Lim. <laughs> Hi, Alex. Hey, man. Um, again, thank you for having me on your show, man. I, I, I think, you know, like, I really wanted to, to even talk to you way before, but when you were planning this podcast, you know. I, we have I been talking know, about a podcast years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. And I actually, it's just the right time to do to to do more of it because like everyone's at at the house right now, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for uh, having our, me, man. Our topic for today, Alex, is how do you keep Cebu music playing in the new normal? You know what, Alex? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? If if my memory serves me correctly, I woke up to the vinyl records, right? Mm -hmm. And there there were no industrial or there were no commercial level vinyl records uh, machines so we couldn't copy them so we had to buy those vinyl records mm -hmm. then the cassette tapes came right there were the cassette tapes and uh, these cassette tapes you could record press record in the cassette player and record a song from the radio or even a song from another cassette tape but from an original maybe if you have two cassette tapes cassette decks in one mm -hmm. player then digital music came and then we started burning them in CDs, right? Remember those? Yeah, you would burn yeah. songs in CDs as <laughs> clear as the original copy because it was in digital form. Now, because of the digital version of a song, it's easier to share. Then mm. that son of a bitch of a website, Napster came, right? <laughs> and it just yeah. totally blew the Everyone. music industry out of the water. They didn't know what the hell to do with Napster. In fact, uh, you know, record sales started going down, and eventually, I think they won over uh, when they were trying to battle Napster legally. And I think eventually Napster uh, went down, right? But still, yeah. the Pandora's box was open because of Napster. Now, uh, record sales, music sales uh, uh, from artists, uh, from popular global artists or even just local artists, started to dwindle because it was yeah. easier to acquire music you know some parts of the world would probably just download it for free or they can share it to their friends mm -hmm. now the game has totally changed and of course now people can now watch their favorite artists more because there was no other way to make more money there was no yeah. other way to touch the lives of people you couldn't sell them so cds or, or tapes or cassettes anymore exactly. you had to go to their country and perform live which was a good thing for uh, all the fans out there. Now you can watch artists like Taylor Swift or Laney or you know Urban Dub live because of, of the fact that they have to perform live because sales from their albums weren't as, as, as great as they once was when you had to buy an actual physical copy of the music. Now, uh, Alex, we are right smack in the middle of a pandemic. Now we can't have concerts. <laughs> a concert is a thing of the past, at least for the next couple of years. Yeah. And uh, all of these things that are going on right when the music industry was trying to find its footing. My mm -hmm. question for you, Alex, because I was trying to set the stage uh, from where we are now on a global scale, because I think that's what we should look at, at the industry here, although it's quite local, but we always have to think global, right? That's the stage. That's the environment that we have now. We can't do concerts. You know, and, and everything is digital. It's easy, easy to share. And before I ask you what's go, what, what is going on now in the coronavirus as far as the music industry is concerned, Alex, maybe you can tell me what was going on in the Cebu music scene just before corona. Uh, let's just take us back to, let's say, the last few moments of 2019. What was going on? How were your... Uh, Bands, how is the music industry in Cebu? Go ahead, Alex, tell us. Yeah, um, but you know what, uh, just because uh, it's an overwhelming things that are happening, you know, like, but let's, let's just take back a bit of what you were talking about, the history of like, you know, coming from, a, from the vinyl to the cassette tapes and everything. 
um, you would like look let's look at it at, uh, at a point where yes there was a, a shift in the, the music industry as far as um, you know the results of say having uh, a, a good sales back end because there was there was physical aspect of it but you also have to look at it in a way where actually right now when I look at it with the digital uh, uh, digital distribution thing that's uh, happening globally um, it actually looks good in a way because everyone now can have a say, not like before where it has to be, you have to be with a label, whether major independent or you either have a, a, a backup of a guy who could spend for your album, you know, to, to make it available for everyone. But now, I mean, even if I just raise my phone and start making music here and then put it on SoundCloud, automatically everyone can hear me now, right? So. I think it, it kind of opened doors to a lot of things. I mean, the bad thing about it is that it also opened to a lot of music that are crap. <laughs> so, so basically, you, you have both end of the spectrum there, right? So I think um, for me, what's, uh, what's really good about like, uh, you know, like instances in Cebu, especially that there are like labels, like, you know, all the, the outfits that are here, it's really to filter out what's quality. And what I notice now with radio as well is that um, they're very picky also. I mean, they've always been picky ever since. But, you know, now the quality has been raised, I guess, because, like, now different radio stations have been playing, like, local music side by side with a Taylor Swift or a, a you know, like a Laney. That doesn't happen before, you know? So, so it, is a good, it is a good standing looking at that. But let's just go back a bit three years ago. Uh, when I got back from Cebu, coming from Manila, I've been in Manila for, I guess, almost uh, the, the timeline of Urban Dub, you know, and Dice and K9 when I was starting there. And when I got back in Cebu, so I, I, I was here to concentrate on more of the family side of things. I wasn't really into music anymore. Like I con con like stopped music for two years and just like concentrated on I mean, you even saw me in that one dog show, right? <laughs> you know, like, I was really, it was really more of me. But then uh, three years ago, I have noticed the, 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 there's this uh, new thing that I found exciting for me was, the, was this, this whole SoundCloud um, generation where it was all like the music quality of production was just amazing, you know, like, and this was the first time three years ago I heard uh, one radio played a track from a guy named Carlisle, which is Light Me Up. And I know because of that, and I, I was already on, I was, uh, I was working on another radio station that time. And I was like, because mm. I know the local scene, you know, fairly know the local scene, but I was like, hey, why is this Carlisle not being played on my show? Like, who is this guy? You know, so I started asking, uh, actually, who was the guy who, Charles Osmeño was the one who sent me that link. He goes, Yo, bro, have you heard of this Carlisle guy? You know, I was like, no, no. Like, then I started listening to it. And I was like blown away with the production. I was like, wait, he's from Cebu? Uh, is this like a sample vocals? And he, then I, I found out that he actually did everything on his own. You know, so uh, three years ago, you know, I didn't want to go back into music. But then because of the, when I found out about the SoundCloud community uh, kind of music, uh, then, well, which I started um, discovering Carlisle, and you know, I talked to him. Then I asked him about, are there any other people like you who do this stuff? <laughs> and then he said, yeah, you, you should meet James Tenorio from Consolacion. You got Jid Dorano. So he started mentioning these people that wasn't in my circle back in my days when I was doing rock music, right? So, and I was like, hmm, interesting. So I started a show called Beat This. Uh, at that time where we were, uh, the content was still a bit small, but it was, uh, it was directed towards the producers and what I call the computer music, which is, uh, uh, in shortcut, I call them compositions, you know? So they're like, they do everything in the laptop. They do everything on, you know, like on computers. They don't have a real, you know, instrumentation. They just uh, do like keyboards and just put it on the, the digital format. And then that really kind of started my journey to actually start looking for those kind of quality music. And then when I heard the, um, some of the other radio stations playing them, 
side by side with the bigger artists, I said, I think this is the formula to get us to the next level, you know? So, because it took a while, because I, I, me coming from an urban dub, Dyson K9 background where we're, we had national success, I was always looking for the next ones, you know, like as it's, it's, you don't stop if you, if you really like your, what you do, right? So I was looking for it. I couldn't find it for a while. And then I got back to Cebu, heard Carlisle, and that whole community just opened doors for me. That's the time that so when I, yeah. What was going on? Uh, what were the plans for 2020? What were the, uh, you know, what was the outlook like? Was, was 2020 going to be a banner year? Uh, for Cebu music, and uh, what 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 was what was going through your mind uh, when you uh, you know first stepped on 2020 before you knew that there was something sinister going on <laughs> as far as yeah, uh, uh, health actually, conditions. So uh, going back to I know when I started beat this, that's three years ago. While that was happening, there were instances that were were sort of like um, things that I haven't ex uh, experienced in the music industry when I was there. Like when I was in it uh, for, for, for Urban Dub and Dyson Kane and old Sonic Boom and what I've been doing. And then uh, the first artist that was really kind of catapulted me to like knowing more of this sound was when I started working with Karencita. You know, so the Cebuana, I don't know if like you're familiar. Of course, everyone knows Karencita, right? You even yes, had, that, you even I had, had a chance that. to talk to her during my show. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It was all over the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, uh, so I worked with Karen and, and, and the first time I heard Cebuana, I was like, my, like, yeah, this is it. It's like after Carla, listening to Carla and then you get to know like, like these artists, you know, Karen and you have music that is for me, not just only represents Cebu, but really represents the Philippines for a global appeal sound, right? So, because she has the, I, I think Karen Sita is the case study of mine that I feel that she has the, she has, she has everything locked in, like image, uh, quality sound, the locality. Um, what do you call this? She, have, she has this local flavor that, you know, the local market wants, you know? So, local. yeah, putting in Bisaya there with an English, you know, it, it, it was the mix of that, right? You know, and of course, a lot of people will always say that oh, it's also because of Bispop that even that came to be. I mean, that's part of the whole thing, right? But when you say case study of an image of a, I feel of a global artist, like I think that would be something we should be look like we should look at when we want to compete globally. You know, so when were I was, we on our way to compete globally? Were we on our way to trust these artists that you mentioned into the national scene? What was going to happen in 2020 that was cut short because of this pandemic? Well, one thing's for sure is the. Um, because uh, um, because I, I got this job in Warner last year. It's a, it's okay. a, I think I've been a year old. And because of the, the things that I've moved along with, like Karencita and Midnasty and all of that, uh, Warner National saw it. And then they, they started asking me if I want to work with them uh, on, on, on the side of the South, you know, like Bismin, because they've been seeing a lot coming from here, coming from Cebu, coming from Davao, Dumaguete, and all that. So when I started working for them, the, when they put me as A&R and marketing for Visayas Mindanao, I kind of already had this vision of where I want the Visayas Mindanao to go as far as not only national, but maybe compete also on Asia. You know, um, we've, we've done that before as well with Dub and some of the artists I have. I brought them in, in different Asian festival back in the days. But like the thing is now is that with this sound, it's very... Um, it's easy, it's, it's, you, you can consume it easily. Like the, the thing with rock before, kasi, when we put it on, on radio, it's so hard to compete with the quality of what's out there globally, right? Because, um, um, you know, like, unless you're as good are as- you saying, uh, Are you saying, uh, Alex, that we were on our way to compete nationally, if not globally, the Cebu music? Yeah, I could say, you know, it's there. It's just a matter of who do you want, who you're going to be working with along the way when that happens, you know. And part of the reason why I even uh, looked at uh, accepting the job, job at Warner was to, to really see if there, that is, that's going to become a possibility. Because uh, with Warner Music, if you didn't know, we are the big three majors globally. So 
uh, the biggest uh, major labels is Warner, Sony, and MCA, right? So uh, when you say three major uh, global companies, that means that we have 60 offices around the world, and it's really it's it's really pushing music to the next level. You know, like like we have international artists, Asian artists, domestic artists, like you name it, we have it. So the question lang now is like, how do we um, export naman, you know, our music out there, right? And the only thing that I see, like I've done it as an indie to try to export music, but it took forever to get really get there. But uh, with the major label connections, I think uh, it's a bit closer, you know. Um, Alex, than- Alex, I talked about Napster earlier because I think that's a very crucial uh, timeline in the uh, big picture of the music industry, right? Because big, just because of Napster, things started to uh, get really, really different. In fact, the music industry was having a crisis of some sort. And it was, you know, uh, there were artists that came out of, of the woodwork, came out, came out of the internet, like like John Mayer and Justin Bieber, who was just yeah. a kid singing with his guitar in Canada. There were Colby Kaile. There were so many artists that were coming from the internet, that were discovered online. So the way in which you discover artists was already different back then. Plus, of course, now uh, it's easier to procure to get a copy of a song. So artists had to really have more concerts all over the world to reach out to their fans more. Uh, Alex, would you say that it's more difficult now for a music company, for musicians, not just for music companies, but for musicians, for artists uh, to uh, uh, make a living out of their craft? Or is it more difficult uh, now, or is it easier now compared to, let's just say, the pre-digital era? Yeah, oh, well, if you look at the 2020, of course, everyone is having a difficult time to actually make money now. But uh, with that said, I think uh, what's best now is to really put out content more. You know, so like, and everyone, like even the musicians are having it a hard time. It, they're having a hard time because they're now in a position that they have to become an influencer at the same time. You know, like, like, you know, as much as you just want to be a musician, you can't do that anymore. You like, like, if you want to, if you want to enter the game, right? But of course, I'm not saying you can't be a musician, musician, you can, but you cannot enter the industry game. If you only become just a musician, you have to know everything, business, being an influencer, you know, you gotta have all, you gotta have to put all the hats there to, to, to survive in this, in this industry, you know, and, and do you think we have what it takes? Because I think, you know, it, it is such a, revel- a revelation for your personal life if you want to get into that whole thing, right? I mean, like, if, if, if you look at the artists like Karen Sita or uh, let's just even go more international, let's say Taylor Swift, they really talk about their personal ra- lives, right? And they really ask their fans to participate in the process of, of, yeah, of yeah. music making, right? Do yeah. you think we have what it takes? Because we're kind of a private people, right? Culturally... Filipinos, Cebuanos are very private. I mean, we can share parts of our lives, but not everything the way other, maybe people, other musicians would in, in other parts of the world. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's uh, you're actually right about that, Jiggy. I think, I think culturally there is a limitation we could do with Cebuanos uh, as an artist. Uh, it's not a question about talent and sound. We do have, we have an outstanding quality, you know, top-notch sound. Uh, where we kind of like lack, I guess, is that it's an overwhelming setup when you get into the more national uh, situations or even just, not even national only, but if you're online and you want to compete online, it's already overwhelming, you know, like, so it's really, you know, what what happened with this pandemic going in, because I already had a a really good plan on 2020, what what I was going to do with the besides Mindanao setup, because my, like, just to give you an idea what I was supposed to do. Well, I, actually I'm already doing it now, but, but the thing, it could have been, I guess, my, uh, you could say uh, the effect would have been faster if, if it weren't for the pandemic, right? But my idea was really to pull in, when I did my Bismin research, uh, I, I came from a, a background where you know, Cebu was on the radar of the Philippines uh, music industry because of what we did back in the days with Urban Dub and Dyson K9. So that's already, you know, it's all in, it's all in the history books, you know, like, you know, um, or in, in, in Wikipedia at least, right? So, but the thing is, how do you, 
it doesn't stop there. It's how do you continue that? Like, how, how do you, because it's not just me about, it, about me doing that sort of legacy to just, just make that, but, but, but not even just the opportunity of making money out of that, but really like, how do you see that, that contribution in the next five, 10, 20 years? And, you know, really like, that's really my goal, right? So, yeah. so the idea was when I got into the major label, I worked with Warner, I saw the difference of, say, looking at, you know, the South in a different way now, because before it used to be all about Cebu, you know, Cebu, Cebu music, all about that. Uh, we've done that with Urban Dub and Dyson K9. You can only do so much about Cebu because it's already a, there's already a, a, a certain audience that doesn't want to change. You know, like they, they want to listen to this thing. They're very, um, our competition not even is Manila. The competition of music listening is really the foreign artists with us because we love to listen to foreign music, right? So even that is already a struggle, right? So, so when I look at it as holistically, I said the only way the Visayas, uh, the only way we could go to the next level of making Cebu or even the South an industry is that it can't just be about Cebu anymore. You know, we did that like in the early 2000s. We did that in the time of local ground. But now it's like you have to look at the market as Visayas Mindanao. So what I was looking at is that the only way it's going to be big for us and it becomes, because right now we're only a scene. It's not an industry yet. There's no one really making so much money in the, in the, the exchange of music in, in, in the Visayas Mindanao, right? Uh, so what I was looking at is that if, if uh, I want to, I, I, I'm seeing a picture where Cebu knows the Davao scene, Davao knows the Iloilo scene, Iloilo knows the Cagayan scene, you know, it's like all of us would have to be well informed of what's happening in the Visayas Mindanao. And now you're looking at a bigger picture because it is a Visayas Mindanao audience. It's not anymore just Cebu. So in Cebu, it's already a struggle for us, but I, I am, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at it now. It's, it's better than before compared to the time, early 2000s. It was harder back then. You know, now, like... When you say better, Alex, what do you mean? Like, uh, like there are venues now who, who just, uh, who, who, who allows artists to play original. Back in the days, you can't do that. You know, I mean, back in the early 2000s or like even late 90s, I was in a band. And every time I go inside a venue, they will always ask me for uh, cover songs before I can actually play in a, in a, in a bar. Alex, you know, music... Uh, music listening platforms like Spotify uh, allows artists to have some sort of a trickle down uh, uh, income, right? Or I don't know what you call that. They get they get uh, a little bit of uh, income royalties? from from, from Spotify yeah. royalties. That's the word I was looking for. Sorry, it took me a long time. I need to, another cup of coffee. So, um, Alex, um, is that a boon to uh, local artists? Are are they, are you guys take, are the local artists taking advantage? of uh, music platforms like Spotify? Are they, are they making some sort of a living from having their music uh, played in Spotify and other platforms similar to that? Well, uh, if you ask me, um, yes, I've seen that in some of the artists here in Cebu who's taking advantage of, you know, like Spotify, YouTube and all that. But um, it really depends on how you see success. Like for me, for example, like for some artists here, I, I, of course, I salute them for doing, for taking advantage of that and making a bit of money of that. But when you're in my position where I've already seen how it is nationally, uh, I would want them to go more than that, right? So, so for me, competing in the music space, it's not, for me, I really, I'm really encouraging artists not to think about just Cebu, you know? Because at the end of the day, if like, for example, Urban Dub is a national artist, Okay, we didn't, we didn't go there like promoting it was Cebu music, right? But people ask, you know, like, where are you from? You're from Cebu. So automatically representation is there. So we don't really need to say that it's Cebu music, but by heart, it, look, everyone knows that Urban Dub is, comes from Cebu or Dyson K9 comes from Cebu. Fast Pitch comes from Cebu, you know, like, so all the things, even Sheila and the Insects, like, you know, but we don't go out there. So, so um, back to my question. Um, so... Uh, are local artists taking advantage of Spotify? Do you know anyone? Are your artists taking advantage of it? Do yeah, they get yeah. sort of royalty? Is yeah, that yeah. enough for them to make a living and feed 
you know, their family feed themselves? Or is it just a very uh, minimum uh, amounts that uh, it, you can't really consider it a it's, uh, sort yeah, of it's not, it's not yet. It's not yet there, you know, as far as, well, I don't know. I could be wrong, but uh, based on what I've seen in Cebu right now, it's not, it's not going as far as uh, you you doing it as you know part of a you know part of a career like it's like like you're you need to get a, another you, you need to get another job to make it work you know what I mean so um, Alex you you were the guy who was responsible for thrusting uh, bands like Urban Dub, Fast Pitch, and Days and Canine into the national consciousness right into the national yeah. music scene. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was a totally and completely different world. We don't live in that world anymore. So the playbook that you used to succeed nationally, you have got to throw that out of the window. So what do you think, Ken, you still learn, I'm sure you can throw the entire book out of the window, but you can still remember the lessons that you can still apply in the coronavirus. So what lessons have you learned from uh, taking the careers of bands like Urban Dub into the national uh, scene and uh, still apply it in the coronavirus? Well, um, for me, it's really about, you know, it's really about, I always tell this to all the artists, it's about foundation. You know, it, you cannot go further if you don't even have a foundation in the very beginning. So most of the kids now that I see, um, uh, which is they're so used to instant success, you know, so they want instant likes, they want, they want things like, you know, they come up with content just so that to get the, the clicks, right? So, so the thing is that, that, Although that is how it's practiced now and some, some of it kind of works, I still want to work with artists that have a foundation. Like I, could, I, want, I would want to grow with them and that's how I think why it's going to work even if the playbook is new. But I think- Alex, I explain to me what you mean by foundation. What do you mean by foundation? Because in the new world, you can't have a concerts, right? The reason why artists would go to Manila is to perform, right? To watch yeah. them live, to watch Urban Dub perform live in, in a gig, in, in, in a smaller venue, in a bigger stadium. But mm -hmm. uh, those days are gone. So what do you mean uh, by well, foundation? foundation? Foundation is it starts with the artist, what the vision is all about, right? It, the, the branding, you know, or it doesn't even have to be a branding, but really what, what makes you be out there in the first place. So if it's like, you can't, you can't, like, the found, when I say foundation, it's base, it's your sort of your credibility to not to not change along the way if things are just like you're lost between like oh here's much more here's a, a bigger budget for you can you change your style of sound you know what i mean like yeah, you have yeah, to have yeah. a foundation you have to have to know who you, you are you have to commit uh, yeah, to uh, yeah. so, a sound for right? example for example if your sound is a death metal cha cha you know and you just want to do like, <laughs> like and you, if you want to do death metal cha cha and that's really your thing like, like, make, like, make sure to be, you can't, like, one, one day or the, one, one way or the other, someone would go, hey, can you, instead of death metal cha-cha, can you do, like, death metal country, and I'll give you money. You can't just, like, go death metal country, right? Because you are a death metal cha-cha artist. So, my thing is that the artist has to know, really, what they want first, and that, and, and I think with the playbook we did with Dub and Dice K9, we, we, even even with Dub, it was really very focused on what they wanted, and every every obstacle along the way, uh, it kind of like you know like we we kind of solved things because of the foundation of the artist, you know. So I think what you're trying to say is a formula, right? A formula. Uh, put that in a bottle, and if you already like the taste of that or the sound of that, that's you. This is Urban yeah, yeah. Dub in a bottle, yeah. right? We're yeah. not going to change for anyone for anything. Yeah. And yeah. for how much? Yeah. That's the foundation, right? Yeah. And then, and then, although I, 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 along the way, when you grow, you need to also compromise, right? That's part of it. But your compromise has to be based on decisions of how your foundation was done, right? It's not, it's not just all over the place, right? I mean, um, I, I always, uh, I, I have this, this thing, this, this thing that I, I came up with, no, na parang. Like sometimes it's, um, there's I in music, right? So because it's like the artist, it's me, 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 you know, it's, mm -hmm. this is my creative. But there's also us in music, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's about really like forming a, not only a foundation of yourself, but forming a foundation of how you're going to attack. It's like an army, but like you make, you make, you make 
you put people in the right aspect of your team so that you can move it, whatever comes along the way, you can actually solve those things based on your foundation. And I'll give you an example uh, right now with Route 83. They're, ver they're, 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 very, they're very tight when, with what they do. They know what they want, you know? And it's easier to work with artists like that rather than an artist who doesn't, they have the sound, but they don't really know where they want to go, you know? So when I say foundation, it is very important for an artist to have that to survive in this industry, you know? Um, it's really like, I think one of the best traits that you should have going in. And especially when in a pandemic time, like right now, I, I remember like I was talking to Route 83, they were on their way up. We were going to national level. Mix was uh, going to coin them like artist of, uh, of the month for, for March. And like then March came in the pandemic, right? So, so when, when we had, when, when I was talking to, to Carlisle and Relvin, they were like, wait, is this a sign that, you know, we're not, going to push through with what we planned. The EP was already out. We were on the promotional back end of it all. And then the pandemic hit, right? So then I, I, I told them that, you know, we just have to restructure again, see what, you know, and, and, and for some, usually for some, if something like this happens, everyone would want to quit, you know, but that's a thing. Um, you know? uh, Alex, one of my biggest complaints about, about uh, Cebu music is we have no distinct sound. Um, I don't want to bring in uh, this example, but I need to, to, to illustrate something. If you yeah, listen so to K-pop, if you listen to K-pop, um, they have a distinct sound. It's really a combination of Korean culture and the West. In, uh, it's almost like a, a mutated baby uh, when it was exposed to radiation, right? Yeah. It, it has a, a mutated version of western pop and it's uniform all throughout all of the artists sound the same you know they you know they have their little quirks little uh, signature sound signature style but you can tell that's k-pop um my biggest complaint correct me if i'm wrong huh, because this is just a complaint based on what i hear on the radio uh, mm. based on what i play there's no distinct sound if you close your eyes and listen to a local song Hey, this sounds good. Uh, this is probably international. I don't know. And, until they start singing in Bisaya. So will it be just the dialect, the language that will distinguish us from any other sound? Or no. will, there sh should there be something else? Okay. Um, okay. I have two things to say on, on those instances. Like with K-pop, if you look at it, you know, you might think that it's like original, their sound is, but it's not really original. You know, um, that sound ki kind of like, it took them a couple of years to get that particular, you know, like distinct sound, right? But you still, if you look back, you know, the Japanese were already doing that kind of sound, you know, mm -hmm. and I think they just, so there's a lot of things you nitpick things like you, 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 you get the right formula one way or the other, right, to get there. But what's the thing about K-pop that I feel that is going further is it's not really just about the sound. It's really about the backing of it, whole, the whole thing. And the culture, so I, right? With the culture, yeah. And, 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 and well, one thing's for sure, it's like, it's still dialect with them. You know, like you can't really define now um, K-pop artists if they were just speaking in English unless you kind of know a bit because of the type of the way they say the English, then you'll know it's Korean, right? So, but same as like, same as like this with Jamaicans, you know, when we play Jamaican music, you know, it's Jamaican, You know, right? man, you know. Man. <laughs> so it's like, it's, there's uh, partly it's really dialect, right? But at the end of the day, what I'm looking at right now with the sound uh, for Cebu, it's, it, it's not going to, it's not going to have that because of the fact that, the influences that we have are very westernized, you know? So like when you listen to what, we have a different, uh, different uh, sound um, appeal to even Manila listeners. So when you listen to Manila radio stations, it's so different from how it's done here, you know? Like even big companies who have different station in, the, in Manila and also here, the DJs have a different take on how they play their music here. Because Cebu is just very, it's a critical market, you know, it's, it's not, 
it's so it's so hard to please ba you know and then the standards that we have is foreign music kasi like you know we we don't even majority of the listening habits that we have is not even filipino music it's international kid like you know like makadungog ka so, so back to my question alex um sound uh, what what is the cebu music or the visayas mindanao sound is there such a thing well maybe this pop is one you know like, like that well, what is that describe to us that because i've asked several people this question and i can't seem to get a straight answer what is the cebu or the visayas sound aside from magbinisaya ang kanta of course naturally well what i've noticed though like like majority of um artists that comes from cebu um it is very melodic oriented you know it doesn't work for us here if the the song is just eh, you know usually it's like there has to be melody in it there has to be a strong hook you know mm-hmm. you know even even if you listen to like say a heavy band to a light the lightest band around um you know that you, of course there's a, no distinction that it has to be cebu music but you know mm-hmm. the quality of taste that we have here you know it's again we're very critical as a, an audience you know uh, you know of stories like when manila artist goes to cebu they practice three times four times because they know like diba i don't know if you've heard the story when regine velasquez the, do do her show here she she always you know like hands on needs to know what what's going to happen because he she knows that it's cebu market you know so we're very known with that so i don't think there is a sound you a know a distinct sound a distinct sound you know and and i think it's okay you know because at the end of the day it's really about uh music is not just for me a representation of our city but it's really about a representation of um of of something that's quality that can connect to people you know like so it's a representation of the individual yes yes i believe the artist it's, yeah it's like it's really like it's it's not just about the sound but it's the storytelling of of that artist you know so yeah, so for example, is important. for example why is uh, urban dub successful at what they did is not just because of the sound because anyone could have that sound right but it was because of the storytelling of like they come from cebu you know and then they went to manila and then they had a lot of listeners there you know so and 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 it gravitated to everyone you know you you you, you said a word earlier um uh alex that caught my attention you said backing when we were, we were talking about uh, the k-pop music scene Uh, what did you mean when you say backing because from what i understood uh, the uh, government of korea actually supports uh, uh, their k-pop music scene explain to us uh, yeah. when you talk about backing and how much backing does uh, cebu music or music in general uh, have here in the philippines um to be to, uh, i was just talking to some of my my friends in the industry you know like nationally and and if you if you heard in when the pandemic hit to 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 this whole thing the music sector was the last one to actually take advantage of the you know like the 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 support of the government you know the ayuda <laughs> yeah yeah so even with that alone you know the music sector is not really there yet because we're only give like all the suppliers had they job were gone like everyone the musicians wala but we are the last sector of that uh you know we're not we're not even we we even haven't made a dent to actually <laughs> get more support from the government right so um when i say backing um remember that like i don't know if you saw the netflix um documentary about that k-pop thing right so it's like i think three to five percent of gross income goes to the k-pop entertainment community like like to the agencies gross income of the of of, of korea huh? that's huge you mean the country the country yeah so the entire income of a nation goes to the music industry yes of, wow. of, of yeah that's so what that of in billions right that's why that's why they can compete with ariana grande they can compete with kanye west because they have more money than, you know so um, um can you alex um i've always said that the united states is ruling the world not because of how rich or how powerful they are or the kinds of weapons that they make or the kinds of inventions that they sell to the world it's really because of hollywood 
and because of the music industry. Now, if you want to rule the world, make a music industry. And I think that's what the Koreans did. And not just with their music industry, but with, with, uh, with, their, with their movie industry, their film industry as well, right? They're ruling the world. Because yeah. I think they are original. Because I think they have a distinct way of storytelling, of singing. They're very um, distinct. So, but I think our problem is we are a nation that's splattered. We're a nation that's uh, divided by lots of water, 7,100 or so islands. Oh, yeah. So we're so confused. We don't really know uh, how each other sounds like because each island has a different dialect, a different tone, a different mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we can solve that art capillagic problem and maybe somehow we can be as one? in other ways, politically, in our beliefs and all that stuff, maybe we can have some sort of a one sound as a nation. Do you think that's possible or that's just a pipe dream? Well, to be honest, you know, I've also tried to research on that ever since I've been here for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I really think it's not going to work if, it's, if there's no example. Okay? Like, like, remember, the floodgates have opened for Cebu when Urban Dub became a national artist. Or even when it started with Sheila and the Insects trying to, to go there, it kind mm -hmm. of opened the doors. Even if you look back at local ground, it kind of opened a lot of doors. But the, the, always the problem that I see in, in Cebu is it's that, it's that small town mentality. Ba? You know, like, you know, like, it's like, like I... It, it, it shouldn't be like, like, I don't know, I could be wrong, but when I was talking to my, to my timeline, the ones before me, you know, like, so this was like around late 90s, you know, and then early 2000s. And everyone was like, ah, Manila will never look at us like this because provincial area. Ta. So I used to think that it was like that. But when I go out there and started promoting artists in Manila and we went there and it was not like that. In fact, if you look at it, Manila's not even competing with us. You know, they're competing with other Asian countries. So sometimes kasi Cebu will compete with what's happening in Manila and that's not even something that we should be thinking about. It's really, we should be one with everyone there on looking at the, it as a national thing, you know. So... When it looks like something that has to be handled and orchestrated from, from a national perspective, right? And I think uh, the government uh, can do it. Uh, yeah, the government yeah, uh, has the, the, the capacity, they have the, the network to do it. And we can even probably make money off of it. You know, the government can probably take advantage of it if it becomes a global music scene, if it becomes a global film scene. I mean, what we turn out in our cameras and in our microphones. Maybe uh, the government yeah. can really make, perhaps make money off of it too. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, Jigs, it's really about the numbers game. You know, like, for example, that the government would look at it if there's numbers that can prove that it's there. The problem is that even in Cebu, you can see, like, the business of music, it's there, but even the media is not backing it up, you know? I mean, I'm surprised to see some of the artists being played now on radio as regular, but it's just on the early stages of that. I remember there was a time when local ground, like every song of the artist and the quality wasn't even that good that time, but it was on the radio, you know? But now mm -hmm. that the quality's there, uh, it seemed to be like it's always a battle between the placements, you know? Like it's, always, it's always a battle when, when like, you know, like, oh, but, you uh, uh, you, you sound like you're relying on, on radio, but li like I said, we live in the digital realm now. Uh, yeah, but, there's a way for you to sell your craft, not just to Cebu, but to yeah. the entire world, yeah, right? But, so but, the, doesn't, uh, doesn't anybody know how to navigate in that uh, infinite uh, opportunity that is yeah. the internet? And, here, and here's where I go back with foundation again, you know, like it starts with your locality, you know? If you have a strong locality, then it becomes, it, it will influence, it will rub off to uh, Explain other. to us, what, what do you mean by locality, bro? Like, um, for example, uh, before, 
like I remember when Urban Dub was starting out and I used to submit to like a lot of radio stations and we were always, be, you know, it was always rejected, you know, and it wasn't you know, until they become successful and everyone wants to be on there, you know, they're, they're like, you know, Bandwagon. yeah. So, so I do get it. Like it's a, it's a business also for the media. Now, remember some people would say right now, even right now, I, uh, I do stuff for, for some of the artists here in Bismin. I still see the relevancy of the traditional media right now. Some, some of these digital guys, like all, you know, all Spotify and all that, don't see the, the relevance of radio. Now, sometimes it's a love and hate relationship with radio and the media. It's like, like yeah, you want to be in there, but sometimes you don't want to be in there. It's like, there's that thing. But on a business standpoint, uh, I, if the media would support it like hol holistically, and when I say support, it's not just going to be just one radio station. It's going to be like every radio station. You know, it's like, it's like when you look at Japan, when you listen to all their radio station, they're playing all Japanese stuff, you know, or, or you go to Brazil, you listen to Brazilian radio station, it's like majority is local. Or you go to Korean, that's the same thing. In Cebu, or not even in Cebu, in the Philippines in general, we're not there yet, you know, like, like it's always a, uh, there's always priority with global artists compared to the Filipino artist, you know, and, and it's not even like the sound now, because if you think we're struggling in the sound of Cebu, what is Fil Cebu mu music? Now you look at me coming from a national standpoint, you look at the music of the Philippines, you can't, what even, is you can't even, you don't even know what is the music of the Philippines, right? So, but so, I, Alex, yeah. we're already struggling. Uh, as it were, now that we have a pandemic, what's going on with the artists now? Are the artists uh, getting hungry? Are the artists suffering even more now that we have uh, a, a, a lockdown? They can't perform in, in venues, that you can't have a concert? Or are the artists more creative now because they have more time to themselves to create, to write new songs, yeah. to think about what their formula is that you mentioned earlier, their foundation is? Um, what is going on now with the artists here in, in, not just in Cebu, but in the entire Visayas and Mindanao? Yeah, uh, right now... Um, I'm getting hungry? It's, it's uh, no, it's... Uh, actually, Starving? What, what, what happened to the pandemic is actually both good or bad. But when I look at the side of like the good of it is that artists are now becoming smarter because of it. You know, like before it used to be just like, oh, I just, I just want to play music and that's it. You know, now mm -hmm. it's like... Oh, how, do, how am I going to get the audience to listen to me now that there's no concert life? You know, like they get smarter now, you know? So, and then Siguro, the good thing of it is that now you're filtering, say the 100,000 artists who just, who do it, you know, and then not really think about it as a career, you're going mm -hmm. to pin it down to just a few artists who's going to survive, right? So, so my, my take on it is that all the artists, even the ones I sign now for, for Warner and besides Mindanao, is really, I usually look at them. If they, they see a two to three year plan of just putting in content, then I'm going to work with that artist because even in the pandemic, they're, they're palaban ba? You know, like they're not, they're not, because like, it's really hard, man. In the music industry, even in a normal situation, you, you can't, you can't, you can't be just let, relax. You know, it, you have to be competitive, you know? Uh, that's the difference between a scene and a dis an industry. In Cebu, um, yeah. Be, uh, before um, I, I mentioned to you artists like John Mayer and and uh, and uh, Justin Bieber, right? Uh -huh. uh, I I know before music the hunters would go to music uh, bars, you know, like they would go to clubs, they would go to um, you know artisan uh, uh, cafes and see who's performing and, and look for diamonds in the rough. Now, um, music hunters like you are looking uh, in online. online, right? Are you looking at YouTube? Yeah. Uh, and and have you discovered, uh, or has anybody discovered an artist, a local artist, or maybe a national artist that, that was discovered online? Oh, there's a performing? lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. In, in especially like, in for example, which particular artist that you can talk um, about? Well, I remember Clara Benin when I discovered her. It was through, on, through YouTube. Then okay. I managed Clara Benin for almost three years. Um, I was one of the executive producer of the album, the first album mm -hmm. that she had. 
Um, another example is December Avenue. When I discovered them, they were like, it wasn't even Spotify that time, it was MySpace, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so the digital um, discoveries have been there for a while now. The thing lang right now is that it's, there's just too much noise now because uh, if you look at the global releases, it's like 30,000 a day um, is uploaded on Spotify, you know? <laughs> 30,000 songs a day, man, average, <laughs> you know? So imagine the noise. That's why it's, uh, it's still important to work with um, radio stations. It's always important to work with media because in Spotify, you can, you can never, like, knowing that there's that much like content out there i mean how are you gonna how are you gonna stick out right like you know because the talent is not the question there's a lot of talent but it's really about how like Im imagine this um carlisle i i heard on radio i didn't hear him on spotify now i'm not I haven't listened to radio for a long time. Like I'm, I'm an, I'm, I, I grew up on radio, but it's a guy who heard, like someone from radio who heard him, told me about him. So there is still the relevancy of radio because you cannot put all the music on radio. That's why you have to pick the good ones, right? In Spotify, you can't just pick so much ones. junk, right? Yeah, so there's just so much there, right? So I used to listen to New Music Fridays back in the days, and it was a bit more um, curated well, but now it's like there's just a lot there that's like, why is this even here, you know? But so what Spotify did was they kind of like created other playlists. So now I direct myself to certain playlists now because at least I don't have to hear the, the other, other things that is not curated. You know what I notice now in the, in the international scene? I don't know if there's a, a local equivalent. Artists are making more music now. They're writing stuff. In fact, uh, from what I understood, um, Taylor Swift's folklore was done on quarantine. In, in fact, she collaborated with an artist named Boy, Bon I Iver. His band, yeah, bon, the name is Bon Iver. And he, he has the distinction of making an entire album in isolation for three, four months in an island somewhere. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, you know that song is actually an excellent song. It's called Exile. Do we have artists now making music in quarantine with all that me time, with all that alone time that are so inspiring that, that they're probably coming up with the best songs of their lives. Is there something that's going on right now well, uh, similar to that in the Philippine music scene? I, uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to like be biased, but like the track of Ani Apo by Route 83 is something that was done on a quarantine setup, you know, like. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and it was, for me, when I heard it, it was really a strong single because I know the backstory of that song. What's the backstory? Tell us. Uh, well, Aniako, if you listen to it, there's two meanings to it. And uh, the, the story behind it is that uh, when Relden, uh, it was, we were about to go to Manila. It didn't work. So it was a sort of a depressing time to like, you know, like look at it. It's like you're supposed to get there already and you're not. And then after that, like, I, I think, I think Siguro a couple of days or something, I, I can't remember now, but um, her brother passed away. So Wow. In From COVID-19? No, no. Um, uh, I know he, uh, uh, or something else, but, but basically because of COVID, um, she can't, she, she couldn't even go to the hospital to, to see her brother, you know? So. When you when when that thing happened, I didn't even as, as an A and R of 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 Route eighty three. I didn't even wanted to force them to release music because you know they you know um, of course the respect of Reldon's uh, gr grievance on 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 her brother. Uh, but then like that along the way, um, they they sent me a, a song, and then I heard it and I said, wow, like like. You know that the story is there. You, you can you can feel it. You know, like listen to the song again, and 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 now that you know the story, you'll understand why it was a it's a very um, you know it. And when you listen to it, you know that it's going to gravitate to to, to an audience because it is it, there is a storytelling in it. You know, and that it's it's very authentic. Like what what it's all about. You know, so if you look at it as a song, you know, it's just like one of those pop sounding songs but now if you look, if you if you look at the authenticity of where it's coming from 
then you'll ano, you'll 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 love it more i guess because it, it it's relatable to a lot of people and uh i think for me Route 83 has been doing a lot of music and they're very fast at what they do. I think Ani Ako is one of their masterpieces for me, like one of their best songs that they've ever written. And it, it, it was their 15th single already. You know, that was their... Imagine they're already on their 15th single now. They've been around for only two years. So um, artists like this is really what should be the standards now of Cebu. You know, like for me, huh? like it should be like you should be doing music like fully if you want to be part of the game you know like of the industry right like if you want to be relevant to the industry you got to be like as consistent as relevant as you can you know you don't have to force yourself if you can't be that per if you can't be that artist but at least if you want to be in the industry you gotta at least uh play the role uh, or, or, or understand where your your position is if you want to be on there right so before the pandemic um Alex, was there like an organized effort to sort of uh, put together, put uh, the artists' heads together and come up with something uh, nationally? Like where was the government trying to sort of uh, get involved uh, in uh, deeper ways as far as nurturing musicians, artists? Um, actually, or... the, the, the thing that happened is just, just recently because of the pandemic, um, actually I, I was invited to that committee uh, for the national, um, uh, it's like a national group of uh, different musicians, uh, different music people like Ryan Kayabyab, um, Mr. Ricky Lakad, you know, like I, I was also invited to, to, to see what I think about those situations, but they actually are making a, a, a group right now to, to actually um, pass to Congress of actually looking at the music sector, you know, so it just started at this year. You know, I, I know it was been discussed a couple of years back, but really it kind of hit na now because of the pandemic that, that the music sector is actually a, a, um, uh, it's, a it's a good economic, um, uh, what do you call this? Um, there's good economic uh, outcome of it. Ba? So there, you can act, there's actually money coming in in the music industry. You know, the movies, kasi if all, I think there is already like a group na, but some music, because I don't think it's happening until just recently. Now I heard some talks about you know doing like uh, opening ourselves to Congress and all that. I think it just happened this year lang. I think that's what 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 actually is the good thing that happened to this whole pandemic. So what were they uh, asking Congress to do? I think um, if I'm not mistaken, it's really to look at the uh, the creative uh, the creative business of it. You know, like how 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 music can act can can really advance a country, you know, uh, from everything, exactly. from everything, like from 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 even just like you know, from even just collection agencies like Philscap to to like to like um, to like having music on on radio, music on uh, establishments, and all that, and and to look at the concert uh, the concert business. We have been, we have given, we have been given a lot of jobs because of that. Like foreigners coming in, it gives a lot of jobs to like Filipino suppliers, uh, caterers, security, you know. And now so, it's gone. Now it's gone. So the thing is now is that it's really trying to position that one day in the next two to three years, we have to position everything so that when that comes back, at least everyone is going to be like the government will really look at it na ba na parang you know like it's not just like ah kibaw na ka sa music bisag ako parents ba like i came from the construction business like ah tukar tukar man you know murag duwa ra ba you know but but i'm telling you like like if you, you get know, a real job yeah it's a, you know like that's that's why i always say na you know like if you want music to be your real job you got you know you have to dedicate yourself there you know and and there is a business there is you know like alex i've like, seen concerts nga murag they're divided by small stages. I've seen concerts uh, on on online, huh? like uh, in uh, the uh, coronavirus. Namura sila divided by stages with ten people per stage. I saw a concert, uh, like uh, it was. Uh, I think Smash Mouth did a like a no holds barred concert, right? So um, the uh, playbook for what uh, music will be like, live performing will be like, is still being written. We don't know what the fuck is. 
is going to happen. Yeah, we don't yeah, know yeah. what's going to happen uh, with, with the concert scene, if, if at all it'll be there. I know a lot of people are singing online with, a, with, a, with an audience. I just saw Hamilton online, that uh, stage musical, that stage play. So it's going to be, um, going to be very unique on uh, what the, the per live performances will look like uh, in the coronavirus. What do you think? Uh, what will it look like? What are we doing uh, as far as your area is concerned, besides in Mindanao, is concerned to try to capture that concert feel, uh, but uh, not actually bringing a, a crowd in one place? Are we doing anything about that? Well, right now it's really about positioning. That's it. You know, like, Ikao Jiggy, what do you think? How, if you were to say, you think this is going to be back to normal in the next five years? Or I don't know. I, I really don't know. To be honest with you, I really don't know. Because I thought when I first knew about this, that this was just going to happen one month, you know, two months, and this will be gone, you know. And then we're still here, man. We're, we're already <laughs> yeah, but, almost but, but, 2020, and we're still here. Yeah, let's just say the, vaccine, the vaccines are like that, done and everything. Like, you know, let's say, let's say. But, but see, this is the thing about vac uh, a coronavirus. You know, it is just, COVID-19 is just one of the, you know, yeah, million yeah. coronaviruses. Yes, so what yes, if there's yes. another one, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What if there's another one that we have to start from scratch? What if it's not a coronavirus? What if it's another virus? Then the vaccine will take longer. So we don't really, there's so much uncertainty. And uh, at least uh, now we know how fragile life is, how fragile the way, our way of life is. And it could change just like that. So that'll be in our heads all the time, right? So I don't yeah. think we will ever be the same again. Yeah, in I'm, the I'm, sure. I'm definitely with you on that, Jiggy. Like it's like every day when I, when I work, wake, wake up in the morning work, I know there's a lot of opportunities that I see on my end. But at the same time, it's like, what's the future of this? <laughs> you know? yeah. But, you know, like uh, to, to, give, to give a good, naman, a good vibe, um, <laughs> you know, encouragement to everyone. You know? and my thing lang about it is that as musicians, you know, like for me, I used to be a musician back in the days, you know. Most people think I, I was just like this business guy in the music, but, you know, I used to be in a punk rock band back in the days, right? So, Go. Uh, but the, the thing is, like for me, an artist would really, it really starts with, okay, stop, like, like, like maybe it can, 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 can uh, distract you with what's happening, right? But if you are the creative person who does your music on your own, I know for a fact that artists will blank everything to create their own thing, right? So it's not, sometimes like that's the reason why folklore works because they, he, she, um, she boxed herself in like, you know, and then just like not think about what's happening outside, right? And creativity is inspiration. And sometimes because of the distractions out there, you know, it's still going to, to hurt you on how you create. But look at, look at what happened to, I guess, um, Route 83 when they, when they still uh, create music even in the hardest times of their lives, you know? So it, it's really about, you know, for me, like it's, it's not even about the concerts, about the, the business outside of that, but it really starts with you and how you create your music, you know? And sometimes when I talk to artists now, I even tell them, stop thinking about the numbers, you know? That's my job, you know? Think about how you're going to make your music good, you know? So, so when, like... Doesn't about, music, does, doesn't great works of art come from great tragedies? Doesn't great works of art come from great heartbreaks? Yeah. What is greater? than this, this than a <laughs> pandemic. pandemic right we should be yeah. turning hit after hit right uh uh to be honest like like I, I like i've i've seen that in a lot of artists like i remember when uh urban dubs embrace album came out that was because uh gabby came came out from a heartbreak setup right so and then songs were really done like you know because it it was really what was happening to him uh same thing right now uh, i have a few artists right now who are like, you know, like one is, I have this artist called All Over the F Place from uh, Dumaguete and they just released this track called Someone Else and it's very Maoi, very hugot, but it's so done well that, you know, it's, it's I, I could say it can compete with whatever uh, is on radio right now, you know? So, um, 
And they just instantly, like, we never thought it was going to be a huge song. We just said, I just told them, this is a really nice song. But then when it came out, like, it got to the charts of Hugot. Hugot, they have Hugot playlist in Anoe. And then now it's like, it's just a month and they already had 120,000 listens, you know? So, uh, Ani Ako is another example. Like, it's at 120,000 listens also in a month, you know? So, you know that the people who are listening to it can really relate to the situation of the songs. So, my, I guess my advice is that, like, the... The, I think the formula right now for in the pandemic setup is that every like now it's so easier for you. I think I, I had this discussion with Paulo Valenciano. Eh? Like we were like talking like we were talking about like the audience now is just right there because you know everyone is at the house. So when you write music, you can actually take just the emotions of the feelings of what you have in, with all these people that universally understand what's happening right now, right? Write something about that. I mean, of course, don't force it if, you, if it's not something I know. But imagine how, like, even if you're going to sing about face masks, you know, everyone's going to try to look at it or listen to it because it's about face masks, you know? Yeah, there's a song about face masks. Yeah. Is there? <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a song for face masks, but I'm just saying, like, the audience is, you know, like, there's a focused audience now. Everyone's online. Everyone's at home. Work at home. There's like habits that is do being done now that it, that I don't think all that I think musically it's not even talked about yet. So that's another angle that you should look at. Like, yeah, same as like, you know, yeah, like what 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 else? Like things like like washing your hands almost every day, like taking a bath twice a day. You know, it's like like these are things that if you make songs like that, everyone can relate. The audience is there. You know, so. Uh, recently, I have a project with um, Warner that I'm doing right now where I'm trying to look at like certain songs and turn it into lullabies, you know, because I feel that, um, you know, lullabies right now are very something that is relatable for, for, for everyone who's at the house and they're your parent, you know, and, and it's a soothing, relaxing music, right? So that's another, yeah. Those Alex, are Alex, um, um once let's just say we live in a world that there's already a vaccine right yeah there, there are already rumors about a vaccine happening late this year or early next year right let's just assume that that things go to whatever normal is uh, when the vaccine comes and everybody gets protected from the virus what does it look like for the music industry what does a comeback look like are you gonna just pick up where you left off pre-corona or is your strategy going to be totally and completely different now? There is going to be a different approach to it because everyone passed through what, you know, the whole thing, right? So, but if there was one thing I, I, I do believe that's going to happen is that before when we used to, the, here's another thing that I noticed in Cebu, eh? like when you have gigs in Cebu, it's like, because you've already seen that artist a couple of times, like mm -hmm. and they're from there, you just don't really like, ah, say, I'll just watch them next time because they're going to be there, you know, they're going to play there again next month, you know? So mm. I have a feeling that will change once this whole thing, you know, and the valuation of artists playing live is going to be different now because you have experience not watching anyone right now, you know? So, so imagine now the valuation of, of like the value of an artist now playing What live. do you mean by valuation? Is that the level of talent fee? Is that what you mean? What do you no, mean no, no. valuation? Valuation is like, 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 ikaw ba? for example, why would you buy, like, diba? why would you pay Starbucks this coffee na pwede man ka mag three in one? Diba? So why? Because of the value. It's even expensive to buy Starbucks. But why are you doing that? It's because you see a value in that product, right? So that's what I mean. Well, about first of all, uh, I want to talk about that for a little bit because that's marketing. And I think it's crucial that the bands understand this. Starbucks is not in the business of coffee, right? They're in the business of experience. So the coffee is just secondary. The entire Starbucks experience is their business. So I think that's what a band should be, you know? It's yeah. not just, you know, yeah. listening to that song. It's yeah. the holistic experience of the band, the story. Yeah. Uh, take, for example, bands like Laney, for example. You know, they involve their fans in music creation process. 
Some mm -hmm. artists even write parts of their uh, post parts of their songs before it becomes a complete song. So yeah. I think that's the kind of uh, exposure, that's the kind of uh, involvement that artists should have with their fans or their you know uh, their new fans, so that they can make new fans. So for say for example, I am writing a song about heartbreak, you know, because I went through a heartbreak, for example. So you post that and then maybe let people participate, right, in the process of yeah. songwriting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, actually that's true. Like, uh, in fact, um, that's always the mentorship I, uh, I tell some of the artists that I, I work with, you know, and, in, and fan engagement is very, very important, whether it's five of them to 5,000 of them, you know. So the idea really is um, get them engaging from the very beginning. And sometimes... There's a there's a line kasi na parang there's a line between between it na parang like ay gamay pa man ang akong listener to like you know they they'll take it seriously when there's like more listeners but for me I always tell some of the artists now from the beginning if you have two listeners you better make sure that two will never go away for the longest time and then it'll be added. I remember um uh, <laughs> one of my favorite talk show hosts uh, said once said his name is David Letterman I'm sure you're familiar with David yeah, Letterman of course, of course. he once said I am at my best when nobody's watching because you're just doing it for the for the simple pleasure of doing it well right for yeah. nailing whatever it is that you're trying to do in this case you know hosting and doing comedy so i think that should be the mentality for artists too right you're not yeah, doing yeah. it for the rest of the world you're doing it for you and you want to yeah. nail it whatever it is that you want to do you want to have something that you can be proud of whether people watch it or not then they start watching then they start listening yeah yeah, I think so. The pride, the, I think I see that, I see a lot of that trait from, from Cebuano artists the, because the pride is there, right? But mm -hmm. sometimes the, the, the only problem is the pride is there, but the work ethic is not, you know, like, <laughs> so sometimes uh, those two things have to be on the same level, but, you know, not saying mm -hmm. that all the artists in Cebu are like that, huh? like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, but you can, you really know. You, you, you can cherry pick the ones who actually have both of that, you know, like, like you, you're, you're right. You have to come, you have to compete with yourself trying to excel on what you, you know, like, right. But please yourself first, because I think when you please yourself, you please a certain segment of, of, of your audience, right. A certain, uh, yeah, yeah. Segment of society. I mean, like I, if I look back at what I do, you know, just like, I'm not, a, I'm not doing, I'm not a musician like I used to be. But just uh, being behind the scenes, if I was just comp like if I was just already satisfied with what I have back in the days, I would never reach that far. I guess like, oh, of course, some people would want to decide to be just in Cebu, and that's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't mind that. But like, there's also a different, di different um, outcome if you have been successful nationally, right? So there are things that that I have learned going outside of Cebu to actually know like how the industry works, you know? If I didn't go outside Cebu, I wouldn't know how Manila would work and how to apply it, say, for a Cebuano artist. I remember when I got back here five years ago and I started talking to artists, they're always overwhelmed with what I'm saying, but it's because I come from a national background now, you know? I, you know, I know, like I've experienced it. so. Now, when I go out there with Route 83, who have experienced Cebu for a while now as a market, and they see now the national level, they, they now understand where I'm going for. You know, it's like... And I know that, in fact, it's even still the model for, for other artists all over the world. If you want to succeed, you've got to go on a, on, on a national tour. You've got to go on a world yeah. tour, right? Yeah. And some artists can't hack that. That's why they never flourish. They never have uh, any more than a successful first album because yeah. the work that is needed to become a national or even a global hit is enormous. You know, yeah. you've got to go and travel all over the country yeah. if yeah. you want to be a national success and you've got to travel all over the world if you want to be a global success. But yeah. now that the concert segment, the concert a part of the equation is already removed, how do you, how do you make up for uh, our inability to perform live, Alex. What what are exactly. artists doing now that well, they can't right now, perform live in a venue? You have uh, pre-recorded events, pre-recorded -pre concerts. You have um, you make content, and it 
And the cool thing is it's not only just waiting for, I'm surprised now because there are bands now in Manila that, that I was, I didn't even think that they would go there like to become influencers and talk about other things aside being musicians. So like who's this? Like uh, a good example is uh, Ben and Ben. So I, I watched okay. their recent uh, Ben and Ben TV and they were talking about other things aside from music and it kind <laughs> of like, I'm not even, I'm not even like, like, I wouldn't think I would be interested in the things that they do, but there's things that, oh, you know, this guy pala plays this game, you know, or this guy pala watches this, you know, that it's interesting to watch. And then, and with that said, I think, um, you know, like some of the artists should go that direction. I mean, of course, you can only go that direction if you have an audience, right? But, but it starts with, you make the music, if there's a listener, then you just add more to it, you know? Like you just have to put more content, I guess, you know? Uh, but before you even put out content on, a, say, influencer side of things, you better make sure you have at least a lot of catalog on your list. Meaning, you have at least like like a good example nga is again is Route 83 who has 15 songs already. Then the, now make some start, good shit, right? Yeah, no, no, like 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 come up with some like um, exactly make make music, just make yeah, yeah. Some music. And, and then plus add on like say uh, like something like a a, a story like like a. Like, what are you doing today, right? You know, like, something like that. Like, or talk about, like, if you, you know how to cook as a musician, might as well just talk about that, right? You know, so... Alex, we have a lot of musicians out there watching this interview from Cebu, from the rest of the, of, of the country, if, if not the entire world, who are kind of scared about the uncertainty of, of, uh, of the future. You know, they can't uh, perform live anymore because uh, of the pandemic, because of the restrictions. Um, they, they don't know what to do. They're scared. Uh, what is your message to all the artists uh, uh, watching this interview right now, Alex? Well, first of all, it's okay to be scared, you know, because <laughs> like, you know, that's, uh, you know, uh, that's, that makes you human, you know, <laughs> or vulnerable to the situation, right? But my, my take on it is that take that vulnerability and that's, you know, that, 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 um, that fear. That, that fear and try to see if you can, if you can um, withstand that, like, and if you can go out of that box, then you can do a lot of things in the industry, you know? Uh, if you're a musician, I'm talking to the musicians who's really taking this seriously. Uh, I'm, of course, the ones who does it for a hobby, I'm, that's good. I um, it's it, it'll always be best of your situation because it's a hobby. But if you're a musician who wants to make it, into the industry and make this a career. Um, what I really want to tell you is that it, 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 this is the right time to connect. I mean, when I say connect, relevant, relevancy of connecting to the people who are all over the, you know, the Philippines, the world, um, they're all in their houses. So, you know, like there's no reason for you not to get to connect to everyone right now because everyone is online now. Now, when I say connect, it doesn't have to be you're connecting to a million people. If you can even just connect to the, a certain few people who evaluates you that you're a, a relevant artist for them, and that, that even is a success already. Like if you have 10 fans and the sto those 10 fans will fight for you, that's already success, you know? But if you want to get more, then you just have to figure out that 10 fans, what they like about you, and then look for those other 10, you know? That's it. You know what, Alex? There's nothing says that everything is back to normal when bands start singing again on stage and people start watching them again and yeah. you know, applauding them and cheering them and singing their songs live and in a big ass stadium with thousands of uh, in attendance watching a concert. Nothing says everything is back to where they once used to be uh, if you watch a concert. And I certainly hope that we're going we're gonna to get back to where we were uh, pre-coronavirus. If not, I'm sure we have uh, better and, and newer ways of approaching uh, the coronavirus. But I'm sure the Cebu musician will be out there battling it out and yeah. uh, making want... great music and hopefully not just for themselves, but for the entire city, the entire country, and uh, with the support of, uh, uh, you know, with fans, with the support yeah. of the government, perhaps, we can even uh, make waves all over the world. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really where the, the dream is. My, my dream right now 
is even if I don't get there, but if I'm going to be part of the, one of the reasons, because like, like the floodgates of, of the Cebu and Vismin was, I was there. I saw it, like when we did Urban Dub and all that. I saw the, yeah. the, the things that happened that opened the gates for us on a national so, scale, right? But so I hope that's going to happen for you and for many bands, for many artists here from the Visayas and Mindanao. And hopefully, yeah. we'll have another Urban Dub, another uh, Dyes and K9. Another Karen Cena yeah. somewhere out there. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, my my, I wanted to to say this, but my dream now is really not just that, eh? because that's already done, you know. Like, and and I can find more artists that can be really nationally be accept accepted, right? But my 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 goal now is the the next the next dream. I mean, of course, it's a pipe dream, but really to find an artist that can stand out globally, you know, because that's ha like it's it's going to be it's going to be hard. Everyone's like trying to figure out that out now now especially now with the pandemic but you know i'm thinking if three years from now that's the time that everything goes back i want to be that person who, who 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 positions himself to be part of how we can make uh filipino music global you know like like that's be really careful nice. what you wish for alex you might just get it <laughs> ladies and gentlemen alexander lim the man behind uh the national success of bands like Urban Dub, Fast Pitch, and of course, Dyson K9. And of course, he's now the artist and repertoire manager of uh, Warner Music. Alex, I hope uh, your artists are well. I hope your artists are creating stuff. And I hope that your dream of a global artist from the Philippines will come true very soon. Thank you so much. It's yeah. been a blast talking to you, man. It's unbelievable. Thank you very much. We could have all day, right? I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. You take care, okay? Hey, hey. Um, wait, wait, Jigs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stop. You just stop recording. I, I want to ask you something. Uh, hypothetical. Yeah, go ahead, man. Let's do that off uh, cam. Thank you so yeah. much. And you have been watching a uh, live. My search for the best ways uh, to live. I'm your host. My name is Jiggy Junior. You take care now, okay?